Hi, today I'm going to show you a quiz program. This one's about music, but you can make it about whatever you want. How many strings does a violin have? Four. How many beats are there per measure in 2-4 time? Well, if you're a musician, you probably know that's two. And in what family of instruments is the piano? Well, hmm, it's got strings. Is it in the strings family? No, the answer is percussion. We got two right and one wrong. Let's go into Python and I'll show you how this program works. When, whenever you run the program, the uh, answers appear in a random order and they're kind of uh, shuffled. There's a feature in Python that, that does this. There's a shuffle function in the random module. So now shuffle is available. If I make a list of some numbers, and show them to you there, uh, then I want to shuffle them. This is how I do it. And now they're shuffled. And every time I call shuffle on that list, it shuffles them. See, that's a different order now. Um, you can also do that on large ranges. You could say nums equal range 100. Now we have all these numbers ordered from 0 to 99 and shuffle that and now they're all mixed up. Okay, so that's one little lesson about how to shuffle a list of things. Next is um, how the program stores the questions and answers. And uh, to know about that we need to learn about tuples. And a tuple, so let's see we have a question and answer and we set that to this. So the question would be how many beats per measure and the answer would be two. So that's a question and answer. It's kind of a two-part thing. QA has two parts and if you want to get the question out of it you use this notation. If you want to get the answer out of it you use this notation. So that's kind of a way to store a two-part object, something with two pieces, in this case a question and answer. Now this is what we want to do is a little more complicated because we have more than one question. So what if we were to say questions and answers, plural, equals, and then we have a, a list, and then I'll go to the next line, and now we'll put in some tuples, like how many beats, Two and a comma, next line, and another tuple. And uh, let's see, something else about music. What is a drum stick made out of, usually? The answer is wood. So now we have two questions here, and now I'm going to put a closing square bracket, and now QAs is a list of tuples. So it's a list of two tuples. Each tuple has two things. So let's look at how we could get things out of this list of tuples. Well if we say QA's 0 like this we get the first tuple. If we say QA's 1 we get the second tuple. Now think about how we might get the first question out of the first tuple. Well, to get the first tuple, that was this. And we want to now extract the first part of that tuple. So, if you thought about doing this, that was right. That gets the first. And notice that we start counting with zero. So when I say first, I mean number zero. What if you wanted to get the answer for the first question? What would you do? We do that. What if we want to get the second question? What about the second answer? Do you get the idea? You see what's happening? Okay, so that's an important part of this project. Now, we need a way to 
uh, present the questions. So we have QAs, which is the questions and answers, and we want to have some kind of loop so that we can ask every question. So what if we say something like uh, for question and then the, the right answer in QAs. What this will do is it will go through every question and it will take the question and store it in this variable question. It will take the quite it'll take the answer and store it in this. So uh, just to demonstrate what this would do I can say print the question is and the answer is so this loop here should show all the questions and answers. There it is. The question is how many beans how many beats is what that was supposed to be, huh? Okay, how many beats? And the answer is two. And what is a drumstick made out of? And the answer is wood. All right, so with, uh, with the for statement like that, we can get the question and the answer out. Um, now we need a way to know if the answer was right. Well, actually, we have to use raw input, too. Uh, let me start putting this into, into NetBeans here. So we have from random import shuffle and then we have some uh, and I'm just going to save some typing here. I'm going to paste this in. Here are three questions. So you remember that QAs is a list containing three tuples. Each tuple has two parts, a question and an answer. Now we want to shuffle the questions. Now they'll be shuffled. And then we want to set up this loop here for question, answer, in QAs. And then uh, we want to use raw input. Maybe you've used raw input before to get the answer to a question. So this is how we'll ask the question. So we say answer is raw input and then the question. And I'm going to add a space after the question. Now we need to see if the uh, if the answer that the person typed is the correct answer, if it matches the correct answer. So we'll say if answer equals the right answer then print right else print no the answer is right answer and then at the end uh, you know, we need to keep track of how many we have right, so we need a variable for that. So we'll say num right is zero, because at the beginning we have answered zero right. Then at the end, we need to say print you got some number right and some number wrong. And then we plug in the number right. And then how can we calculate the number that we're wrong? Let's say you have three questions and you got one right. How could you get the, the two? Well, you could say th three, you could say the number of questions minus the number that were right. And that'll give you the number wrong. Um, the problem with typing a three here is what if you want to add a fourth question or remove a question? So we don't want to have a three here because we would have to change it later. Uh, so instead, we'll use this function uh, to get the length of the questions and answers. So since QAs here has a length of three, this is one, this is two, this is three, then length of it will be three. 
Okay, so let me just uh, look this over again to see if I have it right. So we import shuffle so we can use it. We create the questions and answers, a, a list of these tuples. We shuffle the list. We set the num right counter to zero. We have a loop here where we one by one extract the question and the right answer from QAs. Then we call raw input presenting the question and a space after it. Uh, the space after it is just to make it look nice when you type it in so your answer doesn't touch the come up right next to the question mark. And then we want to know if the answer was right. If it is, we print right. Otherwise, we print no and what the answer really is. And then here we say you got some number right and some number wrong. Uh, okay, so one little bit that's missing is when we find one that's right, we have to add one to the counter. One other thing we want to do is somebody might type in um, percussion or whatever their answer is with all caps or with some combination of uppercase and lowercase letters. And so we don't want to have that uh, cause the answer not to match the right answer. So what we'll do is We'll call this function to convert it to lowercase first. Um, and let me just uh, demonstrate what that does. If you have uh, like ABC and you convert it to lower, then you get that. And so if I want to say um, ABC equals ABC, well, it doesn't because one is capitalized, the other is not. But if I say ABC.lower equals ABC, well, that's true. They do match. Okay, I think I have everything here. Let me run it. And uh, how many beats are there per measure in 2-4 time? Well, are there three? No, the answer is two. In what family of instruments is the piano? Percussion. Right. How many strings does a violin have? Four. Right. you got two right and one wrong. Okay, there we have it. Hello, today I will answer a question that someone asked about this quiz program. Here's the question. Sean Hankey wants to know if the program could ask at the beginning how many questions the user wants and then only ask that many questions. He has 50 questions, I have three. And then he wants to have it present a list of which questions need more work. Okay, so we need a way to just show a subset of the questions, keep track of the wrong answers, and then show the wrong answers at the end. So let's see what we can do. How can we get a subset of the questions? Well, we want a subset of a sequence more generally. The questions are a sequence. Uh, a list is a type of sequence. Let's say we have a sequence of numbers like, uh, like this. and we just want the first five. We can use a slice, which works like this, and now we have the first five. And if we had a variable, then we could do that type of thing. So we're going to have a variable that contains how many questions we want, and we'll use that variable in a slice operation, which is just, uh, in this case, the a colon followed by how many we want. And this is five. It gives us zero, one, two, three, and four, which are the first five. First, let's ask the question of how many questions we want. So we'll say um, questions gets input. And the answer is going to be a number, so we'll convert it to an integer. And then we will use the slice operation like we talked about. And we need to keep track of which ones are wrong. So let's say wrong 
and that's a list, an empty list. And when things are wrong, we'll add to the list. And what are we going to add? We're going to add the question to the list. And at the end, we want to say, you got a certain number right. And let's just say, and the following wrong. Then we'll set up a loop. And that should display all the wrong answers. Let's see if this works. Let's say we want to have one question. And what family of instruments the piano? X. No, the answer is percussion. You got zero right and the following wrong. And then it lists the one that I got wrong. Good. Let's try it again with more. I can put a number too big and it doesn't do any harm. How many beats are there per measure in 2 4 time? Well, there are two. Uh, let's get this one wrong and let's get this one wrong. So now it says you got one right and the following wrong, and then it lists the ones that are wrong. Let's take a look and see if we did what, what was asked. And I believe we did. Hope that helps. Hello, let's continue with this quiz program. We'll make version three today, and this is inspired by this question. Should all the questions and answers be stored in the code? The code will get longer if there are more questions, say 100 or more. And the code would get longer, and that's a great question because these questions for the quiz should probably be in a file instead of being in the program, or a database. But just to be simpler, we'll make it in a file today. Here's such a file, questions.txt. It's in the same directory as the uh, program here. And um, the questions are separated from the answers by a tab. So when you type in the question, you press the tab, and then uh, it should move over some number of uh, spaces, and then um, you type the answer. OK, so there's a file with some questions in it. And so now let's see what we need to do to modify the code. Uh, we were creating this list of tuples, and we're going to change that so we can read it from a file. So to read from a file, we use something like this, with open questions.txt as f, and then we'll say lines gets f dot read lines. So this opens the file for reading and uses uh, f to save the, uh, the, the handle to that. I forget the precise term for that. And then we read all the lines from it and store that into a variable called lines. So we're going to get rid of all this. And where we used to have questions and answers, we're still dealing with lines. So we're going to shuffle all the lines. And then let's come down to here. And we're going to say for, I'm going to cut this, and then for line in lines. You remember from the last lesson that we're using a slice operation to extract just part of it um, in case the the, the user doesn't want to answer all the questions. And one by one, the lines get assigned to this variable called line. And now we're going to take that line and we're going to um, split it. We're going to do a few things with it. First is we're going to use strip, which removes the end of line character from the end of the line. And then we're going to split it on the tab character. And then we're going to assign those two pieces, the question and the answer, to these two variables. OK, so line is one line of the file. Here's the file. So one line would be like that. And then we trim off this new line character at the end that you don't see here, but it causes 
causes us to go to the next line. And then we'll split based on the we'll split on the tab character here. So that'll give us the uh, question and the right answer into two different variables. Okay, uh, let's run. How many questions? One question. How many beats per measure? In two four time, uh, two four time. That's two quarter notes, so they're two beats. And it says right. You got one right and the following wrong. Um, this is not related to the file thing, but I want to I want to fix this too. Uh, it shouldn't say the following wrong if none of them were wrong. So let's just change this. You got a certain number of right. And then we'll say, um, and then we're not gonna, and we'll say um, if there are some wrong answers, then print you got these wrong. And then we will show all the wrong ones. So let's run again. How many questions? Zero. You got zero right. Well, that's okay. We'll run again. How many questions? One. And a violin has four strings. And it says right to this answer. And then it says you got one right. Good. Now let's get at least one wrong. Uh, no, the answer is percussion. You got zero right. You got these wrong. And, the, and then it lists all the questions that are wrong. Okay, so to review, we took the questions that were inside the program and we moved them into a file here. And the question and the answer are separated by a tab character. And then we wrote code to read the file. And we use this with as along with open. And then we use read lines to get all the lines of a file. And, and then as before, we mix up the lines. And um, then we look at the lines one by one. And for each line, we strip off the new line character at the end and then we split it on the tab character. The rest of the program is the same except for the last part I changed to be a little bit more precise about um, if you got something wrong. Okay, there you go. And I hope that answers this question.